Nika cannot catch a fucking break. She bro. Was but I don't understand like what what does that do for for Tiffany? So like, basically if I, 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 <laughs> she fuck. she can use that mouth though. Uh, uh after yeah. this point. So she's like, so I fixed it. <laughs> and then you're just it's so fucking, fucked up that you're laughing at this. <laughs> it's, it's not this funny. Poor, this poor woman went through all this look, shit look. for you to laugh at her pain. Let me tell you how it's about to go. Let me show you the towel you're about to throw. This is hip hop, try to run in our house. We'll knock your ass straight out the door. I'm the enemy's epitome, the fantasy, my tendency to mentally give your career the death penalty. I instantly advise you to match my intensity. Try to fit my brain like Jackie Kennedy. I so tired of the why not start up putting MCs in a pine box. You motherfuckers couldn't even hit me in my blind. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Lost Jazz TV. We are Reddit MC, and I'm Ray. Well does. The moment we have been waiting for. Episode 8. Season finale of Chucky. Oh yeah. And a lot happened. A lot happened. I would say initially, I felt like Ray wasn't into the episode. I was, should I was, we get into that now, or, or should we wait? It's up to you. But or we could just review it, and then we can talk about it. We'll wait. Okay. I'm just saying initial reactions was di our, our initial reactions were both different. I will say the, the first half was kind of a, a slow burn for me. I was like, mm. the second half, I was like, okay. Yeah. I fuck with that. Started off. Okay, so as you remember the last episode, Andy walks up to Junior's house. Mm. Of course, you know, by now, Junior has killed his dad, Logan. Not, not, let the devil in. And they're just roasting this man. Yeah, they're yeah. like, talking about his height and yeah. he wasn't cut out to be one of us. And Andy walks up to the door. Junior answers. He's like... Hey, I'm Andy. Uh, I'm looking for Jake. He plays it well. Oh, yeah. Like, Andy has, oh, like, a good, good Like a master. <laughs> yeah, he's got this good guy doll I want to buy. We met in, in, like, an online chat group about vintage good guy dolls. He was selling one. I want to buy it. He's like, your mom home? Nah, she's dead. <laughs> uh, initially, I was like, and he, I he, try not to laugh. <laughs> like, I know it wasn't funny. He's just like, nah, she died. And he said about Jake wasn't there and all this other stuff. And then, like, he's like, you down home? Actually, yeah. Yeah, he is. I was like, oh, shit. This shit's about to go down. And I think in this moment, because Junior and Chucky had talked before they actually went and let Andy in. Because Junior had, like, blood on his face from when he killed his dad and all this other shit. So, like, you know he had to clean up at least a little bit. So, I knew it wasn't going to be like he going to just walk down there like he yeah. was and just answer the door. Junior and Chucky talked. So, I think Junior was thinking... So I'm about to bring this dude up here, and me and Chucky about to kill this dude. Yeah. We're gonna get rid of him. Round two. Round two. Yeah. Like, and he's feeding off this adrenaline. He just murdered his dad. So I mean, might as well go ahead and add another one to the count at the point. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's not what happened. Not even sort of. And I knew they weren't gonna kill Andy. I was trying to figure out what was gonna happen. I thought maybe they would knock him out or something like that. And like, okay, well, he's unconscious. We're gonna tie him up. We're gonna save him for the end or whatever. He gotta like, come back. Yeah. yeah, something like that. But none of that happened. Andy literally goes upstairs. Junior's room. Yeah. And they're like, he was just here. And he was talking about Chucky and his dad. And Andy goes to check this closet, which is where the body was stuffed. Nobody there. And he's literally going through and asking him so, a bunch of questions. Like, he says, well, he must have went out with his, his girlfriend or whatever. Like, you know where they might have went? Do you know where they might have went? I don't want to think about that. I will say the way Andy was pressing Junior was like kind of weird, considering the context of like they're in Junior's house. Like, hey, you mind if I look around? Uh, I'm gonna look in your closet. Your dad home? His phone's here. Okay, I'm gonna stick my hand in this bathtub. <laughs> like, <literally laughs> like, like what? It, it was like he knew. Yeah. It was. It was like literally like as if Andy had watched the entire thing go down and he knew. And he was just like, oh, let me try here. Let me do this. Yeah. And like, literally, there was like a noise of water. So there was a tub. Like, they were going to do like a, a bowl bath type thing. I don't know if whether it was Junior or if Logan had done it earlier. He didn't make it that far. No, he didn't <laughs> make it that far. He checks the water and you're thinking, okay, Chucky's in there. Chucky's going to pop out. and I thought he was going to like him. fucking stab his fingers or something. Yeah. He didn't do any of that. So Andy leaves and tells him, just tell Jake to let me know when he gets there. And then Chucky pops up out the toilet. He's like, I knew he'd never look like here. in the toilet. Like, he left the lid up. He's soaking in like so, fucking toilet water. So he was hiding from Andy. The, his whole thing is he has a, a specific thing he wants to do. His reasoning for hiding from Andy, because Junior questioned him on it, was he had a gun, and I hate guns. Like, cause like they get messy. Like I hate gu uh, guns. He said something else. I can't remember. I know he's industrial fans, which is a playoff of like three. Three axes, which was a playoff yeah. of C to Chucky. Yeah. 
Uh, he said something else, too. Yeah, I so like, I can't remember all of them. But he, he made a bunch of references to the ways he's died. So then we cut to Lexi's house. And Lexi and Jake is there talking. Just them. Keep in mind, Devin's tied the fuck up right now. At Charles Lee Ray's house. Ray house. By Nika slash mm-hmm. Chucky. So they're talking about what Chucky's plan is. Mm-hmm. There's clearly, the past few episodes, he's had every opportunity to kill. He has not. In turn, he has killed people close to them, including the parents. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to figure out what the game plan is. And they got back on the subject of the doll that Jake took from that dude, that mail delivery guy. The guy he paid like yeah. all the fucking loaded fucking money. <laughs> money to. All of it. He's like, oh shit, I left it on the table. So I go back. Anyway, they have this plastic up, I guess, to divide the house from the good livable part from the damaged part. You see Chucky. He says, here's Chucky. He stabs the plastic. Kind of like the here's Johnny thing. Yeah. He's about to kill him. But wait, guess who saves the day? Not Andy. But Pinhead. But Pinhead. <laughs> With his Cenobites. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Kyle. It was Kyle. <laughs> so Kyle shows up, blasts the fuck out of Chucky. Yeah. And I then, mean, she put rounds in that mm, motherfucker. Like, almost blown, like, to pieces in, like, his face. Mm-hmm. So, she explains to Lexi and Jake, kind of like Chucky's plan. Mm. So, he has to convince an innocent to kill somebody. Preferably a kid, I imagine. And if he does it, it's, it's able to trigger his, like, whole army situation that he set up. Which is why, like, Tiffany has, like, what was it, 72? 72. 72 Chucky, Chucky dolls. dolls at... Charles Lee Ray's house. Once Junior killed, uh, once Junior killed Logan, Logan, all these dolls became like alive. Basically, they're gonna follow the main Chucky, which is in this regular doll. Kyle explains to them, and then they're asking about where Andy is. She's like, Andy's on the way, and then they start feeling groggy. And Kyle said, "Well, this is the only way I can protect you." And she basically she drugged him. Drugged him. And told him, look, I'll do whatever I can to save Devin. Because they mentioned that Devin was at Charles Lee Ray's house. Because that was one thing I did not see coming. Oh, uh, for 100% did not think that was like, And that's because I remember asking you, how does she know Andy's on her way? Because yeah. Andy left her. Because the thing was, like, they didn't lead up to it. Because the only thing Kyle said that even remotely tied it in was, we're going to need a lot of coffee. Yeah. So I guess they all drunk coffee, and mm-hmm. that's when she drugged it. Yeah. So beautiful Tiffany goes back to Charlie's Ray's house, the one she bought. You see Nika on the floor. She fished the fuck out of this house. She did. I guess she has amount of time. I guess she has money. I get it. But bruh, she got the way the house looked when she first bought it to when she has it now, there's literally a a fucking downstairs area that where where not only is all the Chuckies and Devin set up, but like where they end up having this little like group session down there where it's like a chill hangout spot. It's like a Lowe's magazine now. It it was beautiful. Like, (laughs) God dang. All right. So anyway, so Tiffany goes back to the house. She sees Nika on the floor, freaking out. No, no, don't hurt me. And she's just basically ignoring, like, her comments. She's just like, hey, baby. And And she's going to drug her. Yeah. (laughs) She pulls up. Uh, She keeps, like, entertaining. Yeah. Like, I was going to say, like, she literally, like, pulled up out of And it was, like, there there was a needle and everything. It was, like, a perfect placement for her not to get stabbed by it. I did call this part. It's still good, though. Yeah. It was a fake out. It's actually Chucky. Chucky kicks Tiffany in, like, the knee, like, hard as fuck. Like, she goes down. Yeah. All of a sudden, he pops up. I'm disappointed in you, Tiff. He just goes on this tangent about how many times, like, he's killed her. This may, like, what, the fourth time? Yeah. I guess he's just fed up with her fucking shit. (laughs) Which, my thing is, because I I talked about it with Scott a little bit. I think, like, regardless of how they feel right now, eventually they're going to get back together. I think it's just one of those relationships where... They just kill each other and come back? Yeah, then, like, start over and loop. The knife's about to come down, but she's like, wait, you can't kill me, Chucky, because if you do, you know your plan won't work without me. You need me. And then Junior and Chucky walk in the door. The other Chucky. The main Chucky dog. Mm-hmm. And he's like... Don't kill her, bro. Don't kill her. He literally said, bro. <laughs> I got Matt Riddle flashbacks. For and then... Time. Jennifer Tilly gets up, and this, there's like this small weird scene, man. Like, it made me laugh. I was like, it was kind of like a like, mother da- a mother son thing. He's like, the Chucky that was with Junior's like looking good, doll. Then Jennifer Tilly's just like, come here, baby. And Chucky's like, hey, come here, sweet, yo. come here, sweet face. It was so weird to see because it's like this mixture of like love or like and like a mom and but also like child. in a sexual yeah. way too. Like, it was there was some weird. sexual tension. They end up all going downstairs, um, to this beautiful hangout pad session they got 
going down there where Devin is literally tied up near all these Chuckies. I don't understand how none of those Chuckies killed, but I guess maybe Chucky has control over them. Mm-hmm. So they're all talking and shit. And one of my favorite things, because it, it did it legit made me laugh. Chucky goes up to his army and he's like talking to him about their plan, but he's being kind of vague because he's not telling them exactly what they're going to do. Make sure you kill everyone. Any questions? And what I'm raising their hand is like, uh, how do we feel about killing kids? It's like, Good question. Uh, let's just say no babies. And then one of them was like, can you define baby? baby. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm dying laughing over at this. And that, that was like trying to, what's the word? To like justify like, why shouldn't we kill these babies? It's like, they're literally. Like, those, those little shits walk around and they get in shit. And like, it was like, like, yeah, it's like, okay, well, how about this? Let's make the cutoff five, under the age of five or six. All right, cool. And another, any more questions? I was like, what if they're twins? Because those little bastards like the gang of body and shit. Like, and then Chucky just dies laughing and everybody starts laughing. I mean, Nika's laughing. Tiffany's laughing. Junior's laughing. Chucky and Nika or Chucky and himself are having a conversation. And they're talking about different things. And it's upsetting Tiffany because, for one, Tiffany likes Nika. Mm-hmm. Because she thinks Nika treats her better than Chucky does. She likes the Chucky doll. But the Chucky doll is becoming self-absorbed and talking to himself. Yeah, because the doll is telling Chucky, which is Anika, like stories about his past. This one was talking about like, you don't realize how much uh, how much tail I get in this body. And they were laughing. And it was so funny because Jennifer Tiddler was so salty in this moment. She was like, dick too. <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> what had happened was they all got into a heated discussion. Chucky got hit. That's right. Tiffany backhanded the mm-hmm. fuck out of Nika. And when like, that happens, real Nika came back. And she's terrified. She's in this whole situation again. And that, the doll Chucky, I guess, can't even, his senses is like, it's kind of like a like a fake off. He's like, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm siding with you. Kill the bitch. Like, go ahead and kill her. Yeah. And of course, Tiffany don't want she to. She don't want to, but she said, like, all she right. She tries to. She's like, all right, Chucky, I'll do it. I'll do it for you, but I don't want to. She's crying. And he, he, he literally hit her with like, like some deep ass ecology with it. Well, I loved it when he said it. He was like, what, what's the matter, Tiff? Are you worried about killing her? Or are you worried about killing me or her? And she just can't do it. So he's like, fuck it. Junior, kill the bitch. And he wasn't talking about Jennifer Tilly or like Tiffany. He was talking about killing Nika. Yep. Junior's like, well, who is she? He's like, he, she's like, he says something like, she's another notch in your belt or some shit like that. And like Junior gets up to do it. He obviously doesn't want to do it because he doesn't know the girl. I feel like Junior wants to kill people like that have wronged him. If he doesn't know the person, it's a whole different aspect. I feel like he can't kill without like good motive. Yeah. But so, then on some G shit, it says, do it or I'm going to do the three of you. <laughs> I'm, I'm off the, or did he say, I'll do or I'm off the three of you? It was one of the two. He one of the two. two. Tiffany, out of nowhere, and I, I told Ray, I was like, I'm pretty sure they're not about to kill Nika right here. Yeah. So how are they about to work their way out of this fucking scene? Well, Jennifer Tilly is like, here, I got your fucking answer. Jumps and cuts fucking Chucky's head off. Gruesomely. And then when she's fucking with a knife just sawing at his fucking throat, taking him down. And she doesn't completely kill him. Because apparently you have to, like, destroy the head. Because he was still talking after. He was still talking with the head. But she was like, I'm so sick of your shit. I'm done with you. She 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 makes, like, a bunch of things. Like, she talking about, like, I'm tired of your little dick. And, like, Chucky does this, like, <gasps> like, <laughs> like, I can't really you said that. And then she makes this reveal that, like, she's like, so how do you think you even got caught? Like, that back night in, in Chicago. That night in Chicago. And they do a flashback to the last thing that we had seen in the flashback from Seven which was after Chucky had killed that dude and left and said, I'm going out. T- well, Tiffany was like, fuck that. She, she called the cops and was like, I have uh, information on the lake. Uh, what was it? Lakeshore? It was something strangler. Lakeshore. Strangler. strangler. Something like that. She, she, she ratted him out. So he's pissed at Tiffany, but she drops his fucking head. Goes like he's going to attack Tiffany. She's like, you think uh, you're going to get out of here with this fucking doll? You're going to need me. And they, they, they get together and they... They walked the fuck out. But beforehand, Tiffany smartly places like this laser, trip beam laser on the door. Because I remember saying, I was like, why? Is she meant to blow the fucking house up? Because yeah. the, the little contraption she had reminded me so much of like 90s films where it was like a trigger. So like you let your finger go off the thing and then yeah. explosion. But things play out. Andy comes in there, tries to save Devin. But however, Kyle is by herself because she drugged Lexi. 
and Jake knocking on the front door. And he's like, no. She opens up the fucking front door. Psh, house blows the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Once that happened, Jake and Lexi wake up. And Lexi got a bunch of messages from her mom and shit. Apparently her mom was caring about her and shit. Jake was just worried about Devin. Let's go find Devin or whatever. Jake apparently got notifications and it was saying there was fatalities at the Charles Lee Ray's house because of the explosion. So we're meant to think that everyone died. Jake, in just like a state of grief, depression, whatever, he wants to go to Devin's house. He goes to Devin's house. It's in Devin's room. I guess he's going to like reminisce or whatever in the moment. Yeah, I did ask you, I was like, how the fuck did he get in the house? We didn't see that part. We didn't, because he literally just walked into the room. And then out of nowhere, Devin appears. Yep. And he's like, hey, and then Jake thought he was dead. He hugged him, he kissed him, and they just talked about like Chucky's plan, and they tried to figure out where they were going to go. And then we cut to, it was the mayor putting on the Frankenstein. I thought it was a play at first. It's not a play. I no, guess it's, it's, it's showing, a full-on movie. They're just showing, I guess, Frankenstein, and the movie's going to go to... Charity. She's there. Lexi's there. Caroline's there. They're basically doing like another like press event thing right before. Mm-hmm. Like she's talking to the, the press. Lexi's there. But then she hears something behind her. She looks back and Chucky has Junior at knife point. And Junior's like, Lexi, help me. So she kind of sneaks off back into the theater and she hunts down Junior. And while that's happening, the mayor's like, uh, we have a special guest. And she's like, I'm sure uh, it's going to be a surprise to all of you, which we both knew who the fuck it was going to yeah. be. Jennifer Tilly. So Jennifer Tilly shows up. And she's got, like, she's giving away all these dolls to these kids, which I guess was supposed to be the plan. Give these dolls to these kids. They'll be activated by Chucky. Chucky will get to do his thing and kill people. And they won't believe the kids or whatever. Yeah. If that many dolls and the, that many situations happen... At some point, they've got to believe a kid. <laughs> there's a copycat killer. He's, he's out here doing there's, there's 80 copycat killers among the states. <laughs> the same shit happened in fucking New Jersey. <laughs> here we are in Florida. <laughs> Caroline freaks out that she wants Chucky. She wants Chucky. And I don't think the press know anything about her condition. Because she also has some kind of, like, something with her, like, maybe autism. I don't know. Is it autism? I'm not it, sure. It's very close. It's, if it's not autism, it's, it's in very that, close. It's in that vein. Jennifer Tilly's like, well, you know what? We can get one doll. So she gives her the doll, which, again, I think that was a plan. Like, she also she says something that, like, kind of shocked me. Because she said it in front of, like, everybody. She says, I guess one measly sick little kid can take care of themselves. Yeah. I'm like, damn. And no one was like, and not one person was like, what the fuck is this uh, bitch? No okay. one was like, yeah. Good. They gave the kid the doll. Like, all right. They start the movie. They're literally, all they're doing is they're showing the classic Frankenstein movie. The mayor is like in the middle. She's next to Caron. And there's an empty seat next to her. I guess they were kind of either hoping, I guess they were thinking we were going to think about Lexi. Because immediately when they did that, they jumped to what happened with Lexi in the back. The way this plays out for the rest of the episode, now I won't explain it all right now. I will explain it, but the way it's shot, it's parallel to each other. Mm-hmm. Like moments in time happen here, they happen here, happen here, happen like They're here. all going on at the same time. Yeah. It's just... One's in front of the screen, one's behind the screen. Yeah. Cuts to uh, Lexi and Junior and Chucky backstage. So apparently Junior wants to get back together with Lexi. One thing they work in, which I thought was beautiful, was I think it was in episode two... They had the conversation in the room about, you know, would you catch me if... I think it was three, but... It was two or three. Yeah. Would you catch me if I, if I fell? And Junior was like, no, you probably wouldn't. But she was like, this time I'll catch you if you fall. Because uh, he's he's on the like a weird tangent about like how we should be together and everything. But he's also got her like in this like monkey in the middle situation where he's holding a knife and Chucky's holding behind her knife. holding a knife. What you gonna do? Exactly. Bless you. Stands up to him like she's not backing down. In the vein of like Junior, you know, I loved you. I really did. I loved you because you was you were sweet. You was kind. I was a bitch. She admits that she so, was a bitch. Yeah, played it well. Yeah, and you forgave me every time. And you forgave me every time. Chucky ain't having. It's like I think I'm about to fucking be sick. He's like Junior, you're a fucking man. Lexi's like, no, you're a boy. Comes to the point where Chucky's getting fed up. He's getting tired. He's like. Okay, if you're not going to get back together with him, Junior, kill this bitch or I will. But before anything happens, we cut back to the theater. So what happened in this situation is uh, the mayor's husband. He shows up. Mm-hmm. And that's what it was. And like, she was like so happy to see him. And if you remember the last time we saw them two actually interact, they were having a 
horrible argument. So she kisses him and everything. She's talking about, let me go get some popcorn and all this stuff. Caroline is sitting next to Chucky. Chucky is watching the movie with her. And at one point, like, because it was like closer to the end of the film. So anyway, at this point, and that's where Chucky laughs. He laughs at this ending, like not the exact ending of the film, but this specific part of the film, which is not a laughable part, blew my mind that not one person, not even the people sitting next to him, looked over and was like, is that fucking doll laughing? <laughs> Nothing. Bro, like, if I'm sitting right here, there's a doll right here, and it, I hear a laugh. I'm looking at the doll. They were just like, there was one guy who was like in front of them who was like eating popcorn and was like, who's yeah. laughing at this part? And he decides, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to peace out. And he goes up under the chairs. And Caroline's like, where are you going, Chucky? The mayor decides she's going to go get some popcorn for her and her husband. And Chucky stabs the seat where she was about to sit, where she was sitting. And then he like starts laughing. And then it cuts back to the whole Lexington thing. Yep. Tension's rising between the duo here. Chucky's he's just fucking fed up. He's like, Junior, I'm telling you, if y'all don't make up, I'm kill this bitch. <laughs> yeah. Which is it was so weird. Chucky makes one last attempt to Junior. Like, hey, if you don't kill this bitch, I'm about to. I've had it. This love of Debbie shit. So Yeah. Junior lunges at Chucky. You see Junior stab Chucky. Chucky's dead. Well, to be honest, the shot that they did was kind of weird. It was very awkwardly shot. Yeah, because it wasn't like, I'm Junior, he's Chucky, and I just fucking stabbed him. It kind of cut weird ways where like it was showing like the screen and other stuff, so like you couldn't see fully what happened. But when it cut back, Junior's on top of Chucky with a knife in his chest, like yeah. stabbing Chucky. Chucky's gurgling, and the last thing he says again is like, oh, I think I'm going to be sick. Because Junior had said... Leave her alone. She's not one of us. And then, the one thing I did not see coming. I did not either. At the same time that Junior stabbed Chucky, Chucky had stabbed Junior. And it, like, pans down. I was like, oh, fuck. So he, like, drops over. And then he says to Lexi, before he passes away, he's like, tell everyone I'm sorry. Come back to the theater. Mayor comes back. She's got popcorn. The husband's just sitting there. She's, like, offers him popcorn. And he does nothing. He literally sits there staring blankly straight forward. <laughs> and she doesn't she doesn't catch that, I guess, because if I came and I sat down next to Ray, and Ray is just and I'm like, hey bro, you want some popcorn? Bro? I'm not gonna just like oh, he must be just into the movie or something and just <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she's she's literally holding popcorn in front of him and reaching over like this and eating popcorn. And the sole purpose they did this was because Old dude was bleeding out of his mouth. She was gross. And dripped into the popcorn. She ate popcorn with blood. And that's how she knew. Because it tasted weird. So they looked over and then she started screaming. I was like, ugh. At that moment, Chucky goes knife crazy. Mm -hmm. Stabbing every fucking seed he possibly can. And he stabs several people, I guess, in the ass. And it kills them. <laughs> instantly. <laughs> like, almost instantly. He's still just stabbing people. And, like, at one point, I remember we were talking about, like, why are there still people sitting down? Well, like, the way it was shot, like, don't get me wrong, it's an awesome-ass sequence, the way yeah. it's shot. But, like, you see everybody in the theater get up in chaos and run, and Chucky just keeps stabbing motherfuckers. Like, who is he stabbing? <laughs> and the, like, he's just, yeah. like, getting it. And the mayor absolutely is getting fucking floored by these patrons. Don't like, feel bad, though? No, nah, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> nah. Like, I mean, I, I one point I was like, oh, shit, because I think one of them, like, hit her with a fucking running knee, I was like, some like, oh, damn, she, Randy Orton punted that bitch. Yeah. And the last thing you see of the mayor is just her laying out on the floor unconscious. Yep. I don't think she died. And then, I mean, we can talk about that later. After all that happens, Jake and Devin show up. They try to get Caroline out. Jake sees uh, Chucky, tells Devin and uh, Caroline to run, calls Chucky out. Like, hey, come for me, motherfucker. Come for me. Yeah, Jake just fucking G'd up. Oh, yeah. I really love Jake in this episode because the character development is like a fucking 180. Oh, yeah. Not that it was bad before. Mm -mm. But like, he fucking G'd up in this one, man. Exactly. Like, it's about time, you know? Exactly. Like, it's totally like, Come at me, motherfucker. They were basically talking about, like, your different plans and shit. Like, Chuck was talking about his plan, and Ch Jake was like, not if I stop you. And then Chuck was like, not if I kill you first. So, Jake, and I don't know what his actual plan here was, other than maybe to get out of the theater and go tell people or something. Like, they're standing in this aisleway. He tries to run around this big middle section to the other aisleway mm -hmm. and run out. And Chucky beats him and cuts him in the leg, which is the second time Jake's been cutting the leg. <laughs> Chucky's on top of him. He's fucking trying to kill him and shit. Uh, Chucky's like, didn't uh, you should have thinking... How is it possible this dog can be so strong. strong? He's like, never doubt the power of Dambala. And I was like, dope. 
I liked it just because there was actually digging into the story of uh, Dembala. Yep. Like this voodoo, whatever Chucky doing. So at least we have some context now. Jake ends up powering out of it. He makes a joke about how he's been working out lately or doing push-ups, some shit like that. And I was like, <laughs> okay, Jake, all right, calm down. <laughs> and he throws Chucky to the ground. Devin shows up, picks up the knife. Devin yeah, also like, you know, fuck that. Yeah. I'll need that knife. Yeah, because Devin tries to hand the knife. And he, he picks him up, pounds him against the wall. And Chucky goes into this rant talking about like, uh, you know when I killed your dad, you know you liked it. Mm -hmm. And he was like, in a way I did like it because I knew he would never do it to me again. But I was also angry. Angry that we would never be able to work this out. And Chucky was talking about, like, he would never have accepted you because, you know, Jake's gay. And his dad, like, oh, God, he was so fucking against it. Yeah. He would have if he got to meet how great Devin was. Like, meet a great person like Devin. Yeah. And Chucky's just like, oh, that is so gay. Yeah. So fucking De Jake, oh my fucking God. You fucked up, Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> he strangles the absolute life out of Chucky, popping his eyes out and all this other shit. Fucking just tossing him to the ground. It's like... Uh, w uh, watch your fucking mouth. That's my boyfriend you're talking about. I, I see you, Jay. Yeah, I see you. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> so they limp out of the theater. They run into Lexi. They don't say it, like, directly, but they, they know because Jake's, like, junior, and Lexi's crying. She's like, no, you know, didn't mm -hmm. make it. They're like, oh, shit, the truck. So they see the truck leaving. Well, it was you see like Jennifer Tilly. So this guy gets into the truck, but guess who's back? Back Andy. again. Andy has come to save the day. Yeah. Now, at least with Andy, he has, like, damaged face from mm -hmm. the explosion. Devin was untouched. Well, I guess, I guess he was by the window. Yeah, he could have he got out. There was a news article that said fatalities. fatalities. Like, multiple people. There was three Whoa. people. There was three people in the house. And we don't even know for sure that Kyle died because they have a fucking anything. But, like, yeah. it was just like, okay, so you just put that for what reason? Red herring. Unless there's just like some corpses in there or something. I don't know. Jennifer Taylor gets into her car. The driver gets into the truck, but Andy takes over the truck. But before he drives off, he looks out the window and Jake's like, that's Andy. He gives a thumbs up. It was a nice scene. Yeah. And then... He, he like drives past Jennifer Taylor. He's just like... Yeah. And, and Taylor's just like, no, no. The biggest reveal, I guess, of the episode, possibly even the, the se season... Because I wouldn't expect it. Not in this, I didn't see this it. Vein. And he's driving. This we, big dragon pops out of yeah. nowhere. <laughs> God. Like, this, this threw me for a loop. That did take me a I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so Andy's driving this truck, and you think it's over. Because, like, the way it's shot, the way it's edited, like, the, the music is right. Like, you think it's going to end, right? Mm -hmm. Nope. You see, like, this little... This little... Glass frame. Glass frame in the Like, door. I guess there's, like, a little door that you can slide open and... Look in the back or whatever, or even talk to somebody in the back, I guess. It gets busted. You see this little gun, and it's fucking Tiffany, the doll, in all its grace. Yeah. And she's like, hi, Andy, it's Tiffany, the doll, not the person. Uh, I yeah. know, it's a little confusing. <laughs> also want to say, because this don't go anywhere, I'm sure it will in season two, uh, they mentioned Glenda. They did say Glenda. Yeah. And I was like, because I, I remember we were talking in the moment, and then you were like, he just mentioned Glenda. She makes Andy drive to the airport. Yep. That's the last that we see of Andy. So then it cuts to, like, it has to be a few days later. Yeah. Because everybody's buried, remember? Yep. So it has to be a few days later. You go to the cemetery, and you see the gravestones of Bree, Logan. Junior in the middle. Yeah, Junior's in the middle. And I will say, Jake has a great speech in this. And Devin, because they were like kind of back and forth in it. Like, I can't say it like verbatim. verbatim. It, it was beautiful. Yeah. He says, like, sometimes we get scared, bad things happen, we try to help, but sometimes we can't. And then, all of a sudden, you see this black glove reach out from behind a tree. And we Split knew. second. And we knew that Kyle had black gloves, so I'm assuming that's where they were going with that. And then the last twist, if you want to explain it, unless I will. I will. I'm glad I'll do it. This, this is fucked up. This is little. <laughs> well, you're talking about the, the thing at the very end, right? Uh, well, no, I'm talking about Nika. Oh, fucking Nika. Nika. You can do Nika. I'll do the last part. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Oh, I forgot all about so, this shit. There's this scene, and this... Goddamn. Like, I really feel bad. We see Tiffany and Nika... In some room, and Tiffany's Tiffany's like she was like I got I had to make sure Chucky couldn't come back because Lord knows what he would do to me if uh, uh, after yeah. this point. So she's like, 
So I fixed it. <laughs> and then you're just it's so fucking, fucked up that you're laughing at this. It's, it's not this funny. Poor, this poor woman went through all this look, shit for look. you to laugh at her pain. Nika cannot catch a fucking break. She bro. was already in a wheelchair bound in yeah. curse of Chucky. So she's like looking to the left, looking to the right, take it back now, y'all. Yeah. And she's freaking the fuck out. We don't know why. Then the camera pans out. And, oh my god. All of her four limbs is fucking amputated. Yeah. But I don't understand, like, what what does that do for for Tiffany? So like, basically, if... I, 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 <laughs> she, she can use that mouth, though. Okay. It would be kind of awkward to, like, this position. I, don't I guess. Uh, whatever. Possibly my favorite part of the whole show uh, was the very, very, very ending, which was Chucky. And he was doing the classic, like, sitting in a chair, reading a book with, like, a pipe... In front of a fireplace, fireplace like, yeah. and it was like beautiful. And he's talking about, oh, you probably have a bunch of questions: who lived, who died. Yeah. You know what? Let's count all the people. Like, and he does a count. He does a kill count. Like he did all the kills. He showed you everything. He showed you even the cat kill. We didn't show you. He's like, it's best I leave that one. But he tells you that he for sure killed the cat. Yeah. And he ended up with twenty one deaths. He killed twenty one people. He basically was just like hyping it up for the next season. And was mm-hmm. like, all right, well, let's go to our our, our sponsors. And it cuts to Chucky will be back in 2022. Like, all right, dope. Yep. Hell yeah. So we get a season two. Really dope. So I'm going to tell you my thoughts now. I'm, I'm not going to go on a 30-minute rant. I'm not. Uh, I thought... 30 minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> 35 minutes later. Um, I thought as, as an episode, it was a really good episode. I really? thought as a season finale, I thought it could have been way better. Um, I'm sure it could have been better. Yeah. The second half was like really good to me. The first half was just like plot hole, plot hole, plot hole, plot hole. But I mean, overall, I really like the season. I can't wait to season two. Now we can actually rate the season. I don't think there was a bad episode at all. I'm not saying all episodes were amazing, great, or top notch. But I don't think there was one that was like, God, what the fuck is going on? I can't watch this episode. Like, I'm still going to power through it, but why the fuck am I powering through this shit? Not one. You know what I mean? I thought there was one, where, like, because the first one when they did the fucking dubbing, we were like, eh. There's, like, small things throughout the season that they could oh, yeah. like, definitely improve like, the dubbing. and The first time we, we said anything about Jennifer Tilly's acting, uh, acting like, like, it seemed different. It was off. The next time we saw her, she was killing it. Yep. The dubbing, the first time we saw it, it was fucking god off. The next time we saw it, yep. it looked like it was on sync. Yep. But I wouldn't give it a 10. I wouldn't give it a 9 either. So I'm going to go me. 7.5. Actually, I'm changing my answer. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Here, here's my thing. Some of the kills were eh. You know, now that we're I picking it apart, because we didn't like most of the flashbacks either. Yeah, the flashbacks. But again, like even with the bad stuff, there wasn't one episode where I was like, uh, that was a bad episode. Yeah. Like, there was all good episodes. Like so, in, in that sense, it at least gets one point for me for each. Yeah, like in the, like we're well, not for each episode, but like at least gets where it's over a five. And I hate to say, if I had to pick an episode I didn't like the most, it would be episode eight, like the first half of. Because like, I just I was not fucking with. it. I'm more more than excited for uh, season two. I can't wait to see what happens, where they're going from where they are now. I feel like they they have improved on everything they need to improve on now. So as long as they can keep this pace and then keep improving, it's going to be a fucking great oh, season, yeah. too. Let us know what y'all thought about the season. Uh, how would you rate this versus other like, horror-based shows? Uh, would you rate it up kind of high, kind of low? On a scale from I Know What You Did Last Summer to fucking Bates Motel. I don't even know if Bates Motel is the best thing, but I'm just, I know Bates Motel is really well-liked and... Mm-hmm. We didn't like I Know What You Did Last Summer. I love Basement Tale. Oh, yeah. So, let us know what you thought about it. Give us other stuff you want us to check out. If somehow you get to it before we do about, like, the new season stuff, flood us with the comments. Yep. Send it to the email. Whatever you got to do, let us know. And we will definitely hop on as soon as we can. But until next time, y'all, thank y'all for watching these reviews with us. We really appreciate it, y'all. Been a good journey. And until next time, until season two, anyway, deuces. Adios. Slam the thing is back to your crotches, my crew just might roll on you like